Hey guys, a recent update for Borderlands 3 put in the Crazy Earl's reroll machine. For 250 Iridium, you can reroll any existing anointment on any piece of gear, and in the same update, it caused them to severely nerf the world drop rates and mayhem to kind of basically counterbalance the new anointment reroller. Because this game, uh, Borderlands 3 at least, is pretty much about farming anointments rather than farming the guns themselves. And basically, this made a bunch of people complain over social media, uh, definitely justifiable, and just voice their opinions on this change in general. So that all got me thinking, what does it really mean to loot in this franchise of Looter Shooter? Because you guys know that every Looter Shooter is different, but I'm thinking about Borderlands 3, and I got a couple ideas to make the farming feel much better. Now, let's go ahead and start this video by saying exactly one week after that update of them nerfing the world drop rates, one week later, they put a hot fix out that actually addressed a lot of the concerns that players had, making better farmable sources for class mods and artifacts, making proving grounds and trials feel a little bit better, making circles of slaughters give you some cool rewards, they added some iridium behind it, and I actually think that this hotfix, at least on paper, because uh, I haven't tested it at all, but at least on paper, this actually looks really amazing for the farming experience, and they added um, a lot of good stuff in this hotfix, so kudos to them. But what I really want to talk about is the looting system in this game uh, in general and how it compares to other games in the genre. Specifically, a couple major changes that could be made to dramatically improve the system that Borderlands 3 currently has. So let's go ahead and just talk about Borderlands 3's looting system and how it compares to some other games in the same genre. Now, BL3, in my opinion, uh, to start off, has one of the best loot pools in looter shooter games. Interesting guns that have unique and unrealistic effects, crazy names, great easter eggs, red text, everyone has guns they love and guns they hate based on how they work, what they do, or whatever. And that's what's great about the game. Even if it's a gun you hate, it still gives you a strong emotional feeling that actually makes you love the game even more, even if it's in an ironic way. For example, when a Malik Spain or a Tunguska drops, you know, some of us might physically cringe when that happens, but come on, man, it's hilarious in an, in an ironic way when a freaking Tunguska, dude, like, it's a Tunguska, right? It's what makes this game so unique and gives it such a creative identity, all the different guns in it and all the different crazy effects and different builds you can make because of that. Um, and even for example, if you played this game when they originally buffed the lob shotgun, it was so hilarious and amazing to see one of the worst guns in the game become one of the best overnight. It was the greatest hotfix in this game's history. I'm just kidding about that one. But it was one of my favorite because it was just, it was a really fun time. Now, on top of that, another great thing that this game has is a dedicated drop system on top of their world drop system. Now, of course, these systems aren't perfect, but the fact that these systems exist, it's really great to be able to play the game and not only randomly find the perfect piece of gear for your build, but if you have a build in mind and a, you know, a specific piece of gear you want, you can go to that spot and grind for it instead of aimlessly trying to make it magically appear. Um, I'm pretty sure, out I haven't played Outriders, but I'm, I've heard that Outriders uh, is pretty much just world drops. There's no dedicated drops. And, you know, we gotta talk about what's good about Borderlands 3 is one thing that's great about it is the fact that it has dedicated drop drops. Now, the number one thing that Borderlands 3 lacks in its looting system, in my opinion, is customization, which is something that games like Outriders do have. Uh, the Division, I think, had it. Godfall had it. As well as other games, for example, all had. A way to change your loot itself and customize the mods on it. Now, what's awesome is Borderlands literally just added the anointment reroller. I just showed you guys the update for it at the beginning of this video, but that is a very shallow level of customization because of how the anointment system in Borderlands itself feels. Now, I made an entire video a long time ago on how to fix the anointment system in the past, so if you wanna see me do that, the video is actually called Why Dedicated Drop Rates Don't Matter in Borderlands 3, and the point I make in the video is that the generous rate of dedicated drops doesn't matter uh, is because you're not actually just farming for the gun. In Borderlands 3, we farm for anointments, and the bulk of anointments in Borderlands 3 feel utterly useless. Now, the topic I'm gonna bring up here is something that most people know as the grind. 
and we do have to talk about the grind when we're talking about looting in looter shooter games. The grind is something that exists in looter shooter games to add longevity. Many of, or well, much of the end game is about grinding out your best piece of gear to make your best build possible. Even for people out there who love niche builds, that isn't the best build out there, they still want to perfect their niches um, and get the gear they want until they feel content with it. Now, don't get me wrong, grind is not the only longevity that a game should have. It should have good replayable end game content, a good replayable story that you can level new characters with, but the grind is something that must exist when it comes to just the pure farming aspect of it. You know, you have to have a destination uh, to take your journey. The journey does not exist if there's no stepping stools along the way and no prize at the end. So the grind is something that we must accept. When we're looting in looter shooter games, sometimes you won't get what you're looking for. And that sucks, but the problem with Borderlands 3, in my opinion, is it feels like I'm playing the lottery. Now, what I mean by this is from a customization perspective, uh, we have like three or four anointments that are good for action skill active builds, three or four anointments that are good for action skill end builds, some really unique options like 390, 150 URAD, and then we have these other 50 anointments in the game that don't do anything. Imagination. That's what the other 50 anointments do is nothing. They're basically imaginary. Uh, what I'd really like to see and the first major change is a giant list of anointments that all work for different builds that don't work for others. Now, the thing is, Gearbox has already demonstrated that they can create these things very well. With anointments that I just mentioned, 300 over 90 and 150 URAD, these are the two examples I'll bring up. 390 calculates per pellet on enemies instead of per shot, meaning it's best for one-shot weapons like launchers and snipers. Um, it also works with a lot of other stuff in the game like action skills, grenades, TDR chucks, shields, melee, and more. But it's really bad with anything that won't one-shot the enemy, meaning you have to build around it and it's not going to always be the anointment you're looking for. 150% radiation damage if you're under 50% health is another great example. This anointment, when it's active, is pretty much always great for any content in the game. Um, as long as your build doesn't mind you being under 50% health. For people like me who hate fight for your life, I never want to farm this anointment. I, you, like, if you watch me on stream this game on Twitch, I never play with this anointment because I hate uh, builds that take you under 50% health. I like feeling nice and cozy with my health gate. And that's the kind of major change I'm talking about. Instead of a bunch of anointments that are use useless all the time, make them useless for my build, which means that we can have good anointments like 390, like 150 URAD. These are very good anointments, but when I'm farming in this game, I don't always look for those anointments depending on what I'm farming or what I'm farming, like what build I'm farming for. You know what I mean? So even though those anointments are great and we consider those the good anointments to find, not for every build. Sometimes they are useless because you know, they're one fifty. Like I just said, one fifty U reds always useless to me. So that is the major change I want to see with anointments. And I know this is a big change, and uh, you know, a lot of creativity will have to be exerted to make this change. But even like the new um, action skill anointments they added after that, like action skill damage anointments, uh, like Mantis Cannon damage, um, Amara Ball damage, Amara Phase Cast damage. Uh, are great ideas because those are great anointments for action skill damage based builds, but they're useless for gun builds, you know? Now, one thing I do gotta mention is nine different Iron Bear weapon anointments wasn't a great idea. That just feels insanely redundant. But if we could boil those down to, you know, just a couple, I do think it's a good idea overall. Now, next idea I wanna talk about with the anointment reroller added into the game, a way that we can also make our looting feel much more better and much more meaningful would be adding a way you could literally just sell guns for Iridium. I mentioned how games like The Division, Outriders, Godfall all had ways to mod their guns. Well, they also had ways to scrap the guns for resources to put towards your better gear. And with the customization that now is the Iridium Anointment Reroller, let's just sell our guns for Iridium. Um, what this means is on a basic level, 
even if you don't find the drops you want, your looting can still feel a little bit more meaningful rather than just feeling like a lottery. Like, you know, my ticket was not the million dollar ticket, which a lot of, like, let's be real, a lot of drops in this game is usually useless unless you find the best gun with the best anointment. Otherwise, it feels useless. You know, having options like S tier weapons with S tier anointments, A tier anointments, B tier anointments, it's literally like S and A tier or F tier. Like, you know, there's not that in between. There's not those stepping stools. Um, and I think we can find meaning in that stuff. And being able to scrap your gear is another way to get a little bit of meaning. Um, you know, on a like I said, on a basic level, common guns could be worth one iridium, greens are two iridium, blues for five, purples for 10, legendaries for 20, or whatever math nerd wants to find the optimal levels. They could even make it so that it's tied to your item score. You get different amounts of iridium for different finds just to spice things up. Now, adding this would make everything I just explained to you, what's wrong with farming in this game, um, and like I said, it just feels like playing the lottery. It makes our missed opportunities feel like re-rolls. Like when you scratch a scratch off and it says free ticket. Like I get to cash that in for a new anointment on my gun. And uh, I think I think that would just make farming feel a little bit more meaningful. Now, one other thing I wanna talk about and recommend, uh, let's go ahead and get back to this screen. Oops, not that screen, whatever. I'm not gonna edit that out. Um, is actually an event they did a while ago called the Loot the Universe event. Now wait, before I bring up this idea, I wanna talk about a major coincidence. This is a little bit off topic, but a huge coincidence is the Loot the Universe event um, that I think they should actually just add to the base game. Uh, this hotfix also adjusted the drop rate for legendary items in Mayhem mode and adjusted the drop rate for anointment uh, or anointed gear in Mayhem mode. It's kind of funny that I wanted to talk about loot the universe in this video and this random hotfix from April 30th also talks about uh, drop rates. So, you know, I think coincidences is life's way of telling us when something is a good idea. And that's what I want to talk about is loot the universe. Now, this was an event they did a long time ago um, where new mini event loot the universe. Basically what they did, they took each planet uh, for one week and they added random stuff to it. So for example, Meridian Metroplex, a map on Promethea was dropping like, I don't remember what it was, but it was like Jacob's Assault Rifles or Malawan Shotguns, or maybe it was just weapon types. Um, and then they had other maps that dropped class mods and artifacts. So don't forget those, class mods and artifacts. I think that a rotating schedule of gear to hunt for is another great idea that I am pitching to farming in this game. You know, when we add ways to just go back to old maps uh, that we haven't played in a while to farm for a random piece of gear like Jacob's Pistols, like uh, that rotated daily or weekly or some sort of rotation. Um, that is a great way to add replayability to maps that haven't seen as much play. And especially if they add this kind of system into DLCs, Guys, the game devs of Gearbox, you guys boasted, you guys bragged about some of the new enemies in DLC 2, uh, and especially DLC 4 with like the psycho, uh, the psychos on the bullet psychos, which were awesome. You guys did great creating those new enemies. Give us reasons to randomly go revisit those maps. Uh, currently, there's only story maps, um, and adding a reason, like adding loot, that people could farm for could give us more reasons to go back to those story maps. Um, now, that's not the only thing, you know, I also want Circle of Slaughters, but that's a whole different video and a whole different topic. But my point is, j just adding loot gives us a, r a real reason to go back and play that uh, those awesome new enemies that you guys created for us to play. Um, and just in general, add more stuff to the game, like kind of with the new vault cards that they added. They added vault cards with daily and weekly missions to make you go do stuff in the game you haven't done in a while. So this is the same thing. Adding loot the universe, but to the base game on a rotating schedule gives players reason to revisit other content. And on top of that, you know, for example, sometimes uh, like enemies like the Phoenix in this game, who has a dedicated drop, if I could not have to farm the Phoenix and get to go farm Lectra City, which is one of my favorite base game maps, or one of my favorite story maps, I should say, that would be really cool. Like, um, you know, that way that just gives us an option instead of being forced into a farm we don't like. You know, maybe we could just go look for that item in a different farm. 
And yeah, all right, let's see my next talking point. All right, that's it. Those are all my talking points for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel. One thing I should say is that there really is no cookie cutter answer for um, exactly what they can do for the game. Uh, I wanna point out real quick that I ran some polls. Uh, let's pull up my Twitter poll and my YouTube poll. Um, I ran some polls where I asked you guys, what did you think about the update they did for looting? And you guys voted on the Twitter poll and the YouTube poll pretty much 50-50. Look at this poll right here. Buff them back to the OG rate, keep them how they are now. 48%, 51%. On the YouTube poll, same thing. It was almost 50-50, meaning that the community is even split on this topic. There's not gonna be a cookie cutter solution. My solutions aren't gonna sound good to everyone, but I do wanna know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.